So again, the point of doing this is just because these are niches that people are actually buying in. There's a lot of lists out there, like here's a hundred great niches, but you know, this is actually us going in, doing research ourselves to see what are people spending their money on. Yeah, we're letting Amazon help us with that too, to see, because Amazon's not gonna put anything on this page that they don't think the customer is going to purchase. So this is recorded now? Correct. All right. Well, <laughs> welcome. We are going to be talking about discovery research, how we have our business set up. We try to just test a lot of the listings that we're going after to see what we can get the customer to bite on and actually buy. And then we double down from that. All right. So let's jump into this. Sorry, there's been some tech problems, but we are ready to rock and roll now. So uh, just to prep you guys of what you're gonna see, it is a few slides, it's not too many, it's just showing a basic concept or two basic concepts. Um, and then we're jumping into some over the shoulder action and that's when I'll be a lot more active in the chat. But for this first part, we're just gonna kind of go get through the idea this. across. Exactly, get that idea across and then we will, um, Steven's mostly driving the over the shoulder stuff. So I'll be just looking at chat. All right, cool. So this is discovery research. I'm just kind of breaking this down the slides. I'm going to show two simple ways to find a niche and then how we niche down to find landing zones. The how to, to niche down is actually going to be over the shoulder. The slide portion of this is going to be how to find a niche. So like I stated, there was two different ways to do this. Uh, the two main ways that we find very quickly what niches are worth going after is we kind of trend hunt on Amazon. And then we're also looking for the commonly used words in whatever product we're going after because it helps us gather Amazon's information to see what's working and then see what those people are targeting to gain niche information. So discovery research, this is the trend method. So what we're gonna do is start with a trend. We're, not, we're gonna try to maybe show you some examples of how to find trends. Those trends we normally take, we try to find the associated keywords with those trends so it's easy for us to do research on Amazon. Then we add those trends to search. We're normally, whatever product we're going after, uh, we're putting that normally at the end. This, for these examples, we're gonna sh do shirts because it just makes it easier on slides to show this example through shirts. Then after we've searched on Amazon using the trend keywords and the product keywords, we're gonna find what products are selling the best and then see what niches those competitors are targeting. So here's an example. You've hopefully seen this if you've done any kind of research on print on demand with shirts, tank tops, anything, you see this pattern quite a bit. What we do is we recognize this as a trend then we're trying to get the essence of it, the core. The core is just the, uh, I believe that's an e, EKG. EKG readout. <clears throat> um, and then you can't, you can't search this image on Amazon, but what you can do is relate this to keywords. So as we're doing research, we know that most people are searching this or at least titling this image as heartbeat. And then they normally use other keywords. Those other keywords is what we're after. So we're gonna take heartbeat, we're gonna add t-shirt because this is the example that we're using to the back end of it. Then we're just gonna simply take that to Amazon, search it. As you can see, we have heartbeat shirt. We hit search, then this, results page comes up. We're just normally looking at the results. We wanna see, again, I normally say over 2,000 about to start justifying to see if it's worth niching down. This says over 3,000, that's plenty enough shirts for us to start now justifying to see what trends these people are targeting. So the next thing we're gonna do is start looking for niches. So we're gonna go back to the results page. If you look to the left, you can see it has, um, Stethoscope? Yeah, <laughs> this is difficult. I should have slept more last night. <laughs> but you can see it's red, it has a heart, it has a stethoscope. Um, but they're targeting, if you look at the title, they're targeting nurses. So this is a niche that we can go after. We highlighted the word nurse, but it also has the word nursing in there. Either one of those words, we're gonna try to pull and add to the asset doc. The next shirt, as you can see, is a gaming controller. So in the title again, you can see gamer heartbeat. So there is the niche that they're targeting is gamer. The next one is almost the same exact thing. It's a different image, but it almost has the same exact title. And you can see from the amount of reviews and the pricing, uh, these shirts are selling pretty well. So we're, both of those have gamer. We're gonna make a note of that. Then the next one is running. Again, the same image, the same base image, it has an additional image on it. And then what are they targeting? So 
hopefully you guys can see how easy it is to take this idea and then just start being able to gather enough information to then decide what niche to go after. So we see gamer as twice, nurse and running. If we scroll down a little bit on the page, you can see even more examples. That one that has a school bus on it, so school bus drivers, that's a sub niche. You could do schools, that's also a niche. We just picked uh, bus driver because that's a smaller sub niche. The next one has the paw and the heart, they're going after dogs. The one to the right of that has an airplane. You can see airplane. It, we could also do pilot because that's also in the title, but we are just going to highlight airplane because we're just quickly pulling these niches. And the next one is pretty obvious because it has a volleyball in there. But then they're saying volleyball, heartbeat, shirt, volleyball again um, in their title. And we're going to be pulling all that information and then adding that to the asset doc. So you want to pull all the keywords or all the niches that people are using and add them to your asset doc. We have a very robust asset doc at this point, but it's built like this. We have an idea, then we start adding tabs and adding products that we're going after and then start building the asset doc to make it more usable for us. So next we're gonna show you just another research method. So we use commonly used words. This is maybe a little difficult if you haven't been doing print on demand for a while, but if you do any kind of searches, you'll start to see a theme that a lot of people that are selling clothing use very similar keywords. So commonly used keywords, you're gonna start with the commonly used keywords. You're gonna do this by actually doing a lot of research and just seeing what words are mostly being used. And then just like the trend idea, you're gonna take that keyword, you're gonna add the product keyword to the back of it. Again, we're gonna be using shirts in these examples, looking at the products that are selling, and then seeing what niches the competition is targeting. So in this example, we're gonna use funny. We're using t-shirts because it's the product just to make it easier to explain this idea. Funny is a, I would say, overly used word. If you're creating listings, I would almost not use the word funny because of how much it's being used and you're just getting lumped in with a lot of other competition. It doesn't reflect really what a lot of the shirts are, but people that are making merch listings especially are just throwing this word in as an additional word. And they, I think just because they don't know better or they feel like it's going to add something to their listing. It helps us a lot when we're doing research because as you can see, when we use funny and t-shirt and go to the search results, so we'll take this, we'll put it into Amazon, funny t-shirts, hit search. You can see there's 200,000 results. Now, I don't really want my shirt to show up where 200,000 other shirts are showing up, but as a person that is trying to find trends, this is an amazing opportunity for me to see what Amazon is going to put on this page so that I know what trends are working or are worth going after. So the next thing you're going to do, just like we said before, is actually look at the page. That shirt on the right, I believe, if I don't want to misquote Dave, but he said that we can print under the shirts like this. I don't see it being a hot enough trend anymore. It was very popular. It seems to die down now, but it might be something that we can do but even more importantly is just the keywords in their title. As you can see, dinosaurs is what they're targeting. And that shirt sold a lot because it's got a lot of reviews. The one right next to it is probably much easier to create. And it's just words. They change some colors and it's on a black t-shirt, which we found sells the best. They're targeting sarcasm. This is not a great niche to go after because just like funny, it's very broad. And a lot of people are throwing that sarcasm keyword into a lot of shirts and you might get lost to a lot of the competition that's using that same keyword, but it's still worth noting and a niche to check out and do some research on. Next to it is I'm fine. Nowhere on the shirt does it reference zombies, but in the title you can see I'm fine graphic zombie. Zombie is in there, Halloween is another good keyword, but we're just trying to show you how to quickly find some niches. So dinosaur, sarcasm, zombie. On the right is foodie, it's a uh, pro show. <laughs> <laughs> Vietnamese type of food. Nathaniel really enjoys that uh, soup. What do they call it? Hot pot? Pho. Pho. But uh, it's something else. It's like a genre of food. But a foodie is who'd be wearing the shirt or at least the niche that they're targeting. So again, we're just pulling these keywords. Go to the next. We're going to go down a little bit and just see what else these people are targeting. Five out of four people struggle with math. This is, a, this is a technically a funny shirt, but they're targeting math. The one on the right is targeting boating. Then again, sarcasm, and on to the right is chubby unicorn. I'm just trying to speed this up because I didn't realize we'd be in slides for this long. You're gonna add all these niches to the asset doc. 
then you're going to keep going. You're going to start researching these niches. And this is where I'm going to try to break this down as just a explanation, but then I hopefully drive this point home when we actually do over the shoulder and show you what I'm talking about. So when we're validating the niche, we're taking the niche, for example, nurse, because that was one of the first ones on that asset doc. Then we're adding the product to it, which in this case, we're using t-shirts. You could use v-necks, tank tops, any product, and then you're going to be looking at the results. Normally, we're looking at the number. We like to compete with less than 2,000 results. So if it's more than 2,000 results, we're going to suggest that you niche down and find where you can start competing where there's a lot less competition. And if there's less than 2,000 results, then that's when we're going to run the wingman five-step test. And if it passes, then we're going to actually test and put a product here. And if it doesn't pass, if you're going after a niche and putting the product and it does not pass the wingman five-step test, we just suggest that you move on to another niche or pick another product and try that niche with a different product type. This is our go-to with all print on demand. No matter what product we're going after, I know rule three says t-shirts, we just need to change that, but we look for things that auto-complete because if they're auto-completing, then we know that there's customers going there. We wanna see less than 2,000 results. We wanna see top 10 listings, all are the same product. Then eight out of the top 10, when we look at the BSRs, have BSR, and at least two of them are under a million, because then that shows us volume of sales. I'm gonna let you break this down. Yeah, for sure. So again, we feel like we've beaten this into you guys. This is like what we have built a lot of our business off of that um, asset doc in this five-step test. This is our bread and butter for sure. Um, and so just to give some more meaning behind these five steps, um, I'm going to go through them one by one and just tell you why it's important. So this first step of autofill, that's important because it actually represents customers are going there. Real people on Amazon are typing in these keywords and looking for these products. And that's exactly where we want to be showing up. Uh, we don't want to be wasting our time, even if we're making fantastic designs, putting them somewhere where customers aren't actually actively searching for these products. The second step is that there's less than 2,000 results. Again, like Steven uh, explained, this is important because if there's less competition there, we have a better chance of standing out. So we wanna make sure that we're under 2,000 results uh, and that will actually pass this second step for the wingman five-step test. The third step is that the top 10 listings are all shirts or whatever product you're going after. Uh, this is important because you want to be selling against similar products. You don't wanna be putting up a V-neck shirt where it's all hoodie selling. Um, you know, if mostly hoodies are on that page, that means those customers probably want hoodies and not V-necks. So we just want to pay attention to the actual page that we want to be competing on to make sure that our listing isn't going to um, be standing out or not standing yeah, out. Yeah, not Being standing lost. out. Exactly. Not going to be what the customers are looking for. The fourth step is eight out of the top 10 have a BSR. This re represents that there are actually sales happening here. And that goes along with the fifth step, which is two out of the top 10 are less than a million BSR. And this is important because that means there are monthly sales there. That's a huge thing for us because we want these shirts that we're putting up to sell every month. We don't just want them to sell, you know, once a year or something like that. We want to make sure that it is a consistent seller for us. Yeah, we're looking for the evergreen niches and evergreen places to place products. Exactly. You can show our faces real quick before we transition over. Yeah, we're not in Colorado, but we're in Florida. It's still a little <laughs> chilly here. So you can Steven's got his hoodie on. I've got long sleeves on. Yeah, we're just weak. It's probably 60 <laughs> something. It's we're just being babies. We're used to 90, 80 degree weather. So right. Hopefully Absolutely. that wasn't too overwhelming. Hold I just want to be able to show you guys more strategies, different ways of looking at things so that helps you guys find success. I I don't know. I've been doing this for a long time and just doing research on Amazon kind of comes second nature. So now I'm just trying to break things down easier so that I can explain them better because I have a tendency when I'm doing over the shoulder stuff and then just loses everybody and then nobody's able to take action on it. So I just want to get some feedback from you guys to see, was that easy to follow? Do you understand? You understand a niche, so this is old information to you, or did you see something that maybe you didn't think of before? Um, and again, as I do the over the shoulder portion, we'll just be showing you how we do this in action so that you can use it in your business. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're here for. That's what we care about. We don't wanna just show off what we're doing. Like, look how great it is. Like, we want you guys to actually understand this uh, and be able to apply it and use it. Whatever happened to the wingman five step extension? That is a good question. I think Danny was having problems pushing it through Google. Um, we had a few extensions that we were pushing through Google and Google and Amazon as two platforms are changing things quite a bit. And it's 
a constant struggle to be up to date on both of those unless you're a full-time programmer and you understand Google's ecosystem. We do not. I gave up on the extensions that we had. Danny was going to take the Wingman 5-step test because he was doing it with stuff that he was doing. And he said it was pretty easy to um, just reskin it a little bit and have it run our test. But I think Google's just put that in uh, purgatory. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to get an extension through. Uh, we've talked to multiple people trying to do it. and It's everyone just having problems. So I think the programming side of it is done. It's just stuck in Google land. So we can't actually share that with anybody. We're not even able to use it ourselves currently, which is very sad. Yeah, there was a testing and we pushed everything to testing to beta so that we could push the stuff that we were working out to people and then they changed that up. So I think Google's doing something with their extensions and we just timed it wrong. So I'm not sure where that is. I, I don't, I just kind of gave up on Google extensions. Now we have different ideas to help you guys even more. The programming is not something that we have enough capability. It's not our <laughs> wheelhouse. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> but all right, I've got everything pulled up here to do some over the shoulder. So let me go ahead and share our screen again. Yeah, so I'm actually going to go back to just going to Amazon and typing in Heartbeat. So you guys can just see the page and get a better feel. So when we see those trends, like when we're doing different research and we say, hey, that straight out of something is constantly being saying that keep calm and whatever. We used that example before. We didn't want to use it again, but those are all great things to pick up on and go, Hey, this is a trend. How can I pull that core idea? Like we talked about a few months ago and help me utilize that to find niches at the time. I didn't think that was anything anybody would have a problem with, but just as we teach, I think the way that we talk about niches is just different. So I, then I'm just trying to justify or explain how I talk about niches. So I'll take the trend and instead of finding text-based shirts, I'm actually going to use that same information, heartbeat t-shirt to help me find niches that are worth going after. So you can see sponsored ads. Most of the time when we're running the five step tests, we're not paying attention to sponsored ads, but if you're looking for niches or just additional information, sponsored ads are a great place to pick up on that additional information. So with this information, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. So we see golf. We can add that to the um, asset doc. Another great thing about sponsored ads is it kind of tell you what's coming up. So this Pi Day is something that's coming up in the near future, um, April 14th. 14th, March. Yeah, so this is just great information to, when you're doing research, just pick up on this information. If you are not making Pi Day shirts, it might be something to try because you can see this sponsored ad is going after. It's a smaller niche that I almost guarantee a lot of competition is not going after. So it might be an evergreen place to not, Sorry, it might not be an evergreen place to put a shirt, but it might be a trend worth testing to see if you can get some sales from that um, holiday that's coming up. I don't. Is that a holiday? What do you call that? Yeah, it's a holiday. Um, it, it. What? Yeah. This is a really <laughs> easy way to look at like what trends are coming up, what people are running these sponsored ads on. Um, so it's not going to be a shirt that you can maybe put up and it will sell all year round, but. Um, it is a great place to see, you know, a couple of months or weeks out of like what people are preparing um, for by the ads that they're running. So yeah, and another thing easy with those, way to do research. Yes. Another thing with those holidays is normally based in some other niche. So as you can see, this is math also. So we already have math because we did research previously and showed you guys, but golf, then pie day, if you want to go after pie day, but to make that evergreen, you can just go after math. Then right next to that is um, dog lovers. That's dog. LB, sorry, LGB, if that's a niche that you want to go after, that's what they're targeting. Then Shamrock, this should prompt you to, hey, this might be another holiday coming up. It says right there by St. Patrick's Day, they kind of give you <laughs> the farm with this one, but Shamrock, Irish, those are other niches to go after. Airplane right next to it, soccer, St. Patrick's Day, again, Irish shirt. Just, I'm trying to show you guys as you do research, just try to glean as much information as you can. And by cleverly doing research that allow Amazon to show you as much as possible, it makes it easier to gain the information that you're after. So we were trying to show you before how to find text-based shirts. We showed you some different strategies how to do that. Now we're trying to give you almost the same way of searching, just taking in the information differently to get what you're actually looking for. If niches is something you're having a problem with, Finding these trends and just seeing what other people are targeting is a great way to pick up a lot of niches to start testing. 
yeah, and these are, niches have some research behind them and they have, most of these shirts have sold before. So you know that you're not just, you know, randomly picking a niche. This is actually has some uh, strategic mindset put behind it. Some like, okay, validity. Right, customers are willing to buy in these niches. So let's use that information and let's start targeting those niches. So I, before I move on to commonly used words, I just want to, does anybody have any trend examples that they would like to put in chat and then we can show you exactly how we're looking at it. Heartbeat is a really good one because it's image based and people almost are forced to put the niche that they're looking for into the title, but there are other trends where it is not as uh, image heavy on the shirt and they hide the niche a little bit either in the brand or in the bullet points and we wanna be able to break that down for you guys so there's no confusion. I know sometimes we show uh, research and then you guys are like, oh, that was great, but I can't now do it with this way of doing it. Or I found a trend, but I can't quite understand how to do it with this trend. So I want to give you more, um, view, more of my perspective when I'm looking at this stuff. I wanted to ask your opinion on this. May the fourth be with you. This isn't exactly what we're talking about, but this is like another holiday thing coming up and do you think that people are attaching other niches to this um this is not a trend this is a holiday and they could be but i would before we even go into this i just want to say be extremely careful because disney is one of the major companies that i would not even go close to their trademarks because they are very willing to lawyer up and go after anybody um, so we can do research here. I just want to caution anybody, if you're doing anything around <laughs> Disney, I don't know if you know, but Disney owns Star Wars now, uh, just be very careful. We will click search and we will do some research and see if anybody's attaching other niches to this, but this is a holiday. This isn't necessarily a trend. And this holiday is around a very specific movie that is heavily <laughs> trademarked and trademarked enforced. So, I mean, if you could, you could go after Yoda, you could go after that different style of font. There are a lot of Disney uh, Star Wars characters in here, but this holiday is very geared around Star Wars. And I would just, yeah, just be extremely careful. Yeah, this is, uh, like Steven said, like a dangerous zone to play in. We stay far away from this. Um, and even Robert saying like, just generalize it to star Wars. Like that's not what we want to be going after mm -mm. is star Wars stuff, no. because we already know that it is trademarked by a very large company. Yeah. Anytime you're trying to play in that gray area, it's just, it's not worth losing your account over. I mean, you could do space or galaxy and try to get around this, but it's just not worth losing your account over. Sorry, I just like these shirts. That's all I was <laughs> I was like, this is, I know nobody suggested that. <laughs> all right, so if you guys have any other suggestions for like design trends or saying trends that you're seeing um, that are kind of open-ended for people to type in niches. I have a few that I can pull off the top of my head, but I always want to give, uh, or we like to give you guys opportunity for you to suggest some. And as we're going, if you something pops into your head, then you can feel free to suggest it then as well. Yeah, and then through the week, through the month, if you guys have any of these problems and you're stuck anywhere with research, that's what I'm trying to bring to this group. If any time you have a problem researching anything, let it, me know. I'm more than happy to jump on a video or just kind of walk through steps of how I'm looking at things. I'm just trying to do the best I can of explaining this concept and this idea that I'm trying to give to you guys. Yeah, something else interesting that just came to mind is like, uh, I know when we first started off, we'd be seeing like a lot of images of like things that we saw over and over. So like the heartbeat one, like if you didn't know that that was called heartbeat or you couldn't find a keyword for that, you can feel free to post that in Millionaire Seller too, and we can probably run that down for you uh, just because we've been doing it for so long. So we know it's like frustrating, like, ah, I'm seeing this all over the place. There's people in my niche that are even like loving these types of shirts, but I have no idea what they're called um, to do like keyword research on them. Then you can feel free to post those in the group and we could run those down as well. Uh, we'll try to do that weekly when we do our recap show. No other suggestions? No other suggestions. Okay. <laughs> Should I start going down or do you have one in mind? For another what, trend example? Yeah, or did you want to move into? I was going to move into next, I, I okay. mean, sure. Let's go to what, eat sleep? Yeah, that's right. Was... <laughs> so this is one of my favorite Yeah, this is even more to. easy than the heartbeat one. This yeah. <laughs> it, it tells you 
in it what they're targeting. That's why I, I, this one is a really good example. I just know that we've used this before and I, I always try to give people more looks at things. So it helpfully like something clicks because sometimes we use, we used to use cat example a ton and people used to tell us, Hey, I've seen this already. Can you pick a different niche? And then we would show another niche and then they would say, Oh, it finally clicked. Like I, I was able to, um, identify what you're saying now with different images, giving people a different look at uh, what we're trying to teach them. Yeah, I really like this one just because of how blunt and obvious it is. <laughs> um, so if you are struggling looking for niches, you can see you know the bigger ones are just repeated in most of these uh, trends like math and um, some other ones. Yeah, keep saying what you're saying. I just wanted to point that one out because it's a perfect example of what I was trying to get at. Just like that heartbeat one, if the shirt, I mean, that's, I'm assuming Japanese characters, um, but anything that doesn't have like words on it, you can look at the actual title. This one says anime, so it's, that's what they're going after. But even if you didn't know what this is, if you open up this listing, you can gather more information of what this niche is about. Because this is a merch shirt, and that's kind of why I like showing these as an example, because they, they're unable to hide keywords in the back end. We can go after anything, tank tops, everything. You just might have to use some tools to gather enough information. But with merch, you can't hide anything that you're going after. So you can see in their bullet points, because they only have two, you can see geek. I don't even know what that next word is. O-T-A. Yeah, you're on your own. I shouldn't even have pointed it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, anime. Manga. Cosplay. I'm like really over my depth. So in this high, one. Yeah, there's a lot of words Japanese here that are identifying <laughs> what this is. I would be adding these to my asset doc under niches to go after, and then I would try to put that. Actually, let's do one of those words. Let's put the um, the one that I can't pronounce. So maybe we can get some imagery. Or is this a dangerous game we're playing? I think it's a city. I could be wrong. I don't know. Oh, girl. Who knows? Japanese term for something is obviously anime. Oh, okay. So this is a perfect example. It is a little provocateur. That's why I'm always nervous about <laughs> anime. Anime, it's always sexual. Um, taco, that is hilarious. And if you have a big enough niche that you can't find any space in, just start throwing it with something else. That taco one, taco is a huge niche. They threw it with this word, <laughs> and I think it's sold. It didn't I see? Uh, no. Open that one up and see if it has a BSR. Now we're just going way down a deep rabbit hole. This is what I was a little nervous about, but that's okay. Yep, see, it's sold. Perfect. Um, but the, once we find those niches, this is what we'd be doing, trying to justify them by looking up the niche plus the product that we're going after and then running the five, the wingman five-step test. So if you want to scroll back up to the top of this one, brother, you can see there's a thousand results. So that's under 2000. We scrolled down the page already to make sure that there were mostly t-shirts because that's the product that we're going after. The next thing we're gonna do is just run Jungle Scout. You can do this with DS Quick View, uh, but the next thing we're gonna do is just look at the top 10 listings. We wanna see within the top 10 listings if this product is selling. All of these have BSR and a good amount of them are under a million. So this is definitely a niche that we would go after. Now, if we're not showing up on page one, we might want to niche down a little bit or try some different pieces of art or maybe throw some slightly different keywords in there. But this is a niche that we would definitely add to the asset doc under t-shirt. So let's add this to the asset doc so people can see us doing that in action. And we have the tab for t-shirts or shirts. We're going to put the landing zone keywords where the landing zone is. Then we're going to copy the actual link. We're going to add that. Additional keywords. Um, I'll be covering more of that next week because there's a lot of ticks and tips and tricks to gather a ton of keywords. Uh, if you're having problems with gathering keywords, I got you. <laughs> Hold on. But as soon as that listing goes up, we're going to add it to the link listing because we want to actually check. And then as the months or, or sorry, as the days go on or weeks go on, we want to be checking where that listing is actually showing up. So because t-shirts is one product, we'll take that same keyword and then put tank top or V-neck or hoodie or anything else that you want to put on the back of it. Normally, we like to see if it uh, auto-completes. So here's a perfect opportunity. We can sell onesie. We can sell hoodies. Click on that onesie. Interesting. 
this niche is a lot bigger than I thought. I would have never assumed that there was uh, onesies. I love anime. That's hilarious. <laughs> So this one, it's, it's a mix. It's still um, clothing. Onesies, I think, is a um, trademark term, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it has 118. That's even better for us because it's a lot less competition. The next thing we're going to do is just run Jungle Scout again and make sure these products are actually selling. So this one I might not go after. Now, here's something you have to consider. If you're already in this niche and you already have done keyword research and you've already created art, it doesn't take that much more time to put it on another product. But if this is where you're starting, this is not a place that I would start and put my time, energy, and effort to sell a onesie here. But if you're already going to make shirts, tank tops, v-necks, whatever, it might be worth testing on other products and putting it here. What else? Uh, Autocompleted hoodies? Mm -hmm. You want to just check hoodies? I almost thought you were going to talk about the art a little bit. We're going to check results, 218. That's few. That's fewer competition than 2,000. So we looked at the page. It's mostly hoodies. We're going to run Jungle Scout and just see if it's worth us putting our time, energy, and effort to make this product and make this listing. And as you can see, nine out of the top 10 are selling. And almost all of them are under a million. So this is another landing zone that I would add to my asset doc. And again, I would add this under hoodies. We don't have hoodies tab added, but you can add it, brother. It's not that difficult to add another tab. You can paste it here since you copy and paste it already. Just move that over. All right, let's go back. Do you want to scroll down this anymore to show any more niches? No, I think that's the basic idea. Um, I think we should clarify a little bit of like what the trend, um, what that means to us, because there's some people asking uh, different like styles of shirts, like putting a period after every word um, and things like that. And that's more like the style of the actual shirt. So like this one has a period after every word and this one doesn't. Um, that's not like the type of trend that we're talking about here. Do you have a better way of defining um, like these types of trends where it's actually like eat, sleep, repeat, or um, the I love, and then like there's kind of a blank space that people have to fill in for those certain niches? Um, I don't think through words. <laughs> there, This one, like if you say one has a period and one doesn't, the art style and the trend is the same regardless if it has a period or not, it's still eat, sleep, something, repeat. And I guess that's what I'm trying to get at is like, if you see that trend, how do you identify that trend? And how do you think people are searching for that trend? The period is not going to make or break the way that people search the trend. If the period's on there or not on there, they're going to still search the same way. Or did I misunderstand the question that you asked? Uh, Wendy's like showing like a design style, but that's not really like uh, the trend that we're talking about here. Like Stephen said, it's a little hard, I guess, for us to do it through words. Um, but even sayings like, I woke up like this, like there's no open-endedness for people to put in different trends with that, correct? No. And I guess, yeah, the trend needs to be, when you're doing research, it's just like something that you constantly are seeing. That's how we pick up on trends. Um, but another one is that, um, I guess, hair shirt. Because they always say, like, it's in kind of the same line as that, um, I woke up like this. Uh, maybe not. Let's scroll down a little bit. It might be where they talk about, like, uh, camp hair. It's don't oh. care, but I didn't want to type in the whole thing. I just want to see if it would come up as hair. But, yeah, you can put in the rest of it where it says don't care. Hair, don't care. Sure. So this, just like eat, sleep, repeat, this is a very 
easy one to pull additional trends from because they have to use the keyword. I know she was trying to show like, um, I don't know exactly what she was trying to show. I think what she was trying to show is a keyword phrase. And then is that keyword phrase worth researching to pull trends from? That's why I just wanted to put one keyword in there and not like the keyword phrase. Like the eat, sleep, repeat is kind of the full thing minus the one keyword. If this is kind of the same thing, hair don't care, you're just not putting in the additional keywords so that Amazon will suggest those for you. So again, you can see dancing, Irish, dogs, Jeep. Jeep might be another one that I stay away from, but mermaid, boat, troll, these are all great trends because they're Amazon is telling you people are buying these shirts and then you can see the niche that they're going after and then justify the time that it'll take to make the shirt and do the research and gather the keywords to go after it. Unlike just picking a niche randomly, it's, it's hard to justify if you're just randomly picking the niche because you don't know if customers are actually buying that or not. This is kind of getting Amazon's analytics to help you pick a niche to go after because they're telling you, hey, people that are going after this saying also like this niche. Farming, well, we're going way too fast for me to show, but anything else that's on here that has sold especially is worth justifying going after that niche. Correct. I just wanted to keep us moving along. Um, so if you want to show off the commonly used word, yeah, so funny, this, uh, again, this one might be a little more difficult to explain just because I've been doing research for a long time on Amazon and I can pick up on the words that just everybody uses in their listing. You can use the, but if you type, well, let's try that. I've never done that. The t-shirt or yeah, the shirt. I wonder if it works with the word the. Yeah, the, you almost need another qualifying word because uh, you're going to actually pull up real shirts and not like graphic or niche type shirts. 800,000 though. How about four? Too broad. Yeah, okay. Um, when you're doing research and you're going after those niches and you see eat, sleep, repeat, the words that those people are using in their title, those are the common use words that I'm trying to show you guys. So funny is one that I know a lot of people throw in clothing, especially when they're talking about graphic tees. So funny shirt should pull up a ton of shirts, which it does. And then you can selectively go through here and see what niches these guys are going after. So the first one very, that's not sponsored is a taco. That's a huge niche. That's something that you could probably go after or at least try to niche down into uh, gaming again, gamers, music, uh, the same two shirts that we showed before. This is, changed up quite a bit from when we just screen grabbed that. That's pretty interesting. They're changing these even faster now. Um, fathers, I don't, wouldn't touch that Google one for anything. <laughs> Boating, the same cuisine, foodie. That is hilarious. <laughs> that one right next to it, the St. Patrick's Day one. Drinking, drunk, beer. We just want to show you guys easy ways to find niches that are worth going after. Sashwash. We didn't really add any of these to the asset doc, but I'm, I think you guys see how to do that. Is there another word you want to run down or? I mean, graphic, graphic. T or graphic shirt, I'm sure we'll pull up a lot more. So again, the point of doing this is just because these are niches that people are actually buying in. So there's a lot of lists out there, like here's a hundred great niches, but you know, this is actually us going in, doing research ourselves to see what are people spending their money on. Yeah, we're letting Amazon help us with that too, to see, because Amazon's not gonna put anything on this page that they don't think the customer is going to purchase. You want to start calling these out? Uh, yeah, these are kind of stay away from, so I don't want to be hollering those all out, but that same shirt again with the, uh, that's, oh, I was thought you were going to show the Lion King one. That's a little dangerous. I mean, lions for sure, but I don't know if I do like the Simba outline. These are a little more cautious, stay away from. But if you go deeper into the page, I'm sure they'll start getting a little more not trend problematic pizza 
I don't know if we've done pizza before, have we? Or talked about it, at least on this one? I'm not sure. If we're Mickey about Mouse it. has been getting buff, boy. How many times is that Mickey Mouse shirt on here? <laughs> sunflowers that's becoming a lot more popular i'm seeing a lot more imagery on that um skulls you can see on the right hand side dogs this is just a lot of dangerous yeah let's move <laughs> away from this this is a lot of <laughs> one of these asking what dangerous word like coffee to do something like this or is that already coffee is down? the actual niche the commonly used commonly used words are just words that when you do research and you open up a lot of listings, those are the words that uh, a ton of people are using, like vintage, like um, retro, anything that's kind of like describing the shirt and not actually the niche or the actual product. Those are the type of words we're going after. The shirt is good, but the shirt is a little too broad. It's being used by a little too many competitors or too many other listings, and it doesn't give us the information that we're really we're looking for. We're looking for niches. How can we type in something to have it show us um, graphic t-shirts that we are making because we're putting images on the t-shirt. We just don't want like a plain button up shirt. Tech shirt is gonna be a little difficult too because um, it's gonna be like the text here because Amazon now has the uh, um, customs, Amazon customs. Oh, you can type it in and see. Okay, uh, Andy suggested these three, letter, print, and text. I just wanted to see. Yeah, because Amazon has their um, Amazon customs more people are doing these custom order shirts so this would have been a really good keyword uh, a few months ago but now um, actually it keeps rolling down I'm sure there's some nuggets that you can pick up here tacos we just saw Detroit um, North Wisconsin I almost said Virginia there are still some here you just baseball is right there avocado avocado that Japanese vaporwave what that is is vaporwave the brand oh vaporwave yeah i'm pretty sure that's the brand okay uh what did uh letter and print were his other two sure these sometimes are actual just single letter words, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Around Christmas time, a lot of people buy those like single letter words on it with a P or an L or whatever. But any of these ideas that you guys have, just type them in and just start see, looking at the actual page and seeing what information you can gleam to help you find niches that are worth going after. Dinosaurs, winosaurs, that's wine and dinosaurs together. Coffee. These are pretty big. What was that love one? Click on that listing. What are they targeting? This love letter, graphic sleeve, O-neck. I don't know enough about this imagery. What is that triangle thing? I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't look like they put it in there. But again, if you're looking and actually opening up these listings, you can see their uh, travel, sports, beach, camping. Those are all great niches to go after. And hopefully we showed you guys how to take those niches and use them. I, I, I guess that's what we can do with the last few minutes. Is there any suggestions or questions or any concerns or anything? I just want to address those before we go on to actually. So here, under 2,000. Again, we're just going to quickly scroll the page because we want to make sure that we're going up. Uh, we're giving the customer what they're actually looking for. We're trying to put tank tops here. Our tank tops what Amazon is putting here and is that what the customer is actually purchasing it appears to be like that now we're gonna go up and run Jungle Scout and make sure that it passes the rest of the test which is just we want to see sales and here you can see even in the winter people are buying these llama tank tops what's that first one they buy that one like hotcakes oh yeah see yoga they, they're matching that up with uh, Yoga, that's another great niche to go after. But 10 out of the top 10 have BSR. At least two are under a million. This is definitely a niche I would add to my, uh, or a landing zone that I would add to my list. So if you want to copy this and add it. Mm. 
but this is how we're running our business. We're finding niches that are worth going after. We're finding places to put tank tops, shirts, V-necks, any of the products that we're going after. And then we give it to Nathaniel's team essentially and he does all the <laughs> art. <laughs> and then we start creating listings around that. So I just wanna, before we leave, make sure we're answering any questions. You wanna hit our faces again? Cause I think we've explained this, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Shirts for coffee, yes. Coffee is actually a niche. Um, that's when we would type in coffee, the product, and then try to niche down. And if it's 200,000, we would then look at other people's listings and then actually let's do that, sorry. Coffee's a good one because coffee is a huge um, niche. If you wanna just go coffee shirt because that's probably gonna give us the most. And we'll do it with tank top too real quick. So this is way too much competition. We would definitely not be going after that. Again, the same way that we showed how to find um, text-based shirts, you can do that with this. I run coffee, chaos, and cuss words. That is something that I would try to see if it auto-completes. You can do that real quick, brother, just to see. But we will come right back to this page and, and find some more. I run on coffee. Yep, it auto-completes. We'll see how much uh, results are there. 320, that's an instant way to quickly niche down. We just scroll down the page a little bit and see if there's actually the similar shirts. Yep, we'll go back up to the top. We'll run Jungle Scout. Looks like, mm, almost spoke too soon. 10 out of the top 10 are, are selling. At least two are under a million. This is definitely one that we would add to the asset doc. We're not going to, I just wanna go back because we're burn out of time. I want to respect you guys' time. But coffee, again, I would just scroll down. If it's imagery that you like, and it's not necessarily a saying, because text-based shirts are really easy to make, um, just keep scrolling down a little bit. Are all these going to be sayings? Nice. Well, perfect. Here, type coffee heartbeat shirt in. So it auto-completed. As you can see, 109. This is where I'd want my shirt to show up if I'm doing this, especially if coffee is my niche that I'm going after. Again, all these are t-shirts. We're going to run Jungle Scout. We're going to make sure that these are actually selling. And then we're just going to add this to the asset doc. We don't have to wait for this. This is selling for sure. But again, coffee heartbeat t-shirt. Let's see what else auto-completes. If you take off t-shirt, does it suggest tank tops, hoodies, anything else? So right there, tank tops. 205. It's almost the same exact imagery. If you're gonna make that imagery already and you're gonna have those keywords on deck, I would definitely put it on a tank top. Just run Jungle Scout to make sure that these are selling. Ooh, winner. People that drink coffee and getting these. So again, this might not be the first one I start out with, but if I'm already making the imagery and I'm already making or uh, gathering the keywords, this might be something that I test and uh, put here, but it's not, justifying it for this to be the first place I try to put this um, piece of graphic, artwork. yeah, artwork. Good. Good. No more questions? I think that's it. Hopefully we showed you guys how to find niches worth going after and how to niche down very quickly to find places to actually uh, put your shirts, I was going to say put your art, put your uh, products. products. I keep saying shirts, I apologize. <laughs> I, we strongly suggest not to just go after shirts. Um, it's really great for validating to see if people actually purchase that type of stuff and gather niches, but then take that stuff and get away from the competition. Just like we talked about the last class that we did last month, you don't want to be in that bowl with all those fish. You want to get away from the competition. A very easy way to do that is what we just did. See, people are already auto-completing uh, heart, coffee, heartbeat, and the tank top. Maybe they don't like that imagery that's on there. Give them a different look. If they don't like that coffee cup, what's another thing that you could put in there to get those customers to purchase? You know they're going there. They're just not buying what's on that page right now. And if you already are justifying it by, oh, this other product it's working, now let's see what else I can put this imagery and use these keywords for with the other products that Millionaire Seller allows us to do. And it's, I don't wanna say it's extremely easy. It's, you've put the work in already, get as much as you can out of that asset. The asset being the keywords you collected and the art that you created. Exactly. So hopefully that helps everybody in here. 
<laughs> yeah, thank you guys for joining us live. Uh, and if you're watching the recording, thank you for that. And as we always say, and we'll keep encouraging you guys, if you have questions about any of this stuff, if you've hit a wall, please let us know. So as you're out there doing this stuff, if you're running across it, you're like, man, you guys made it look super easy when you're doing the over the shoulder. But when I go to do this, like, just can't. We'll just keep showing you more examples and keep walking you through this. We don't mind. We want you guys to have success with this. Yeah, and I, I have been doing research online for 15 years. So that's what I'm attempting to do is how can I break this down in a way that makes it easy for you guys to consume and put into action? Before I was just like throwing a lot of stuff at people and it was very difficult to follow. I'm just trying to really slow things down and make sure that I'm covering all my bases. So when I say find good keywords, I need to be able to justify saying that to you guys by showing you how to find good keywords. Just like when I say pick a niche, I need to justify showing you how to pick a niche that's worth going after. I was saying all those things just by default, I apologize. So now when I say that, I'm just going to try to explain it, show you guys through those slides, just like a basic concept and idea. And then actually how we do it in our business, how we train the VAs to do it. So anytime we want a new niche to go after, we do that and then say, Hey, tennis is something that we haven't gone after. We've seen it a lot. Now we noticed that all these products are selling. We've justified it. We've validated it. Now let's niche down and find places to actually put these products. If it's a tank top, if it's a coffee tank top and we know coffee tank top has too many results, how can we niche down? Oh, heartbeat coffee tank top. Okay. Let's put a uh, tank top there. Let's see what else we can get inside that niche and just try to give ourselves the best chance of success instead of what we were doing before shotgun method just oh nathaniel thinks uh bicycle tires is good to put on a shirt put a bicycle tire on a shirt no keywords no nothing no understanding of what we were doing then he asked me to come in and i was like where are these show sh shirts showing up we don't know okay here's how you do better keyword research and just explaining all that to him now we want to give that same information to you guys so that you can find success because i've said it before once you get that first sale it's very addicting to keep doing this because you realize oh i don't have to go out and fight <laughs> traffic. I don't have to fight the cold. I can do almost all of this from my house. And if you start generating some more money, it's very easy to start hiring VAs to then have them do a lot of the research. So if that's something that you hate, it's something you can hand off. If you're not good at art, that's something else that you can hand off for, to a VA fairly inexpensively. Uh, it's not easy to do all that, but it is something that we want to be yeah, showing it, you guys and teaching you guys. It's definitely possible. We've done it. We've helped other people do it. We want you to be the next person we can help do that. So just keep chugging along. Like we said, any walls you run into, let us know. We'll try and help you through it. Yeah, we're just experienced. We've been in the <laughs> trenches, <laughs> taking a lot of battle scars. We're here to help you guys. <laughs>